Hello everybody, my name is Michael, and in today's video what we're going to be doing is this right here. So if that looks exciting to you guys, please carry on and watch the video. Oh, and just one more thing before we go. Please consider like, commenting, and subscribing if you enjoy the video. But now with all that out of the way, let's carry on with the video. Okay, so starting off with Halister Black Cloak here, what we've done is we've given him a Zenithal Prime, which is spraying with black and then dusting over top of the white so we can see those shadows and those highlights. Then once we've got that done and dried up, we're going to start off with a black grey here, which is a very, very dark grey. And this will give us the benefit of being able to uh, shade areas with washes and stuff, as well as highlight as well, while still keeping it looking black rather than uh, grey, especially with the other colours we'll be using as well. And then what we're going to be doing, of course, is base coating the entirety of his cloak. Not worrying too much about the uh, eyes and stuff that he has all over his cloak so far. I'm going to be dodging them a little bit here, but I'm not too worried because there's so many. And we just need to get this base uh, coat down with the black. Uh, the black grey, sorry. Then once we have that black grey down, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to start off with the skin. And we're going to start off with some neutral flesh for this. And that's, of course, going to be our base coat. So it's just giving them down. And there's only a few areas to pick out, which is Halister's face, himself, and his hand. So not too many areas to do here. And also, don't forget about the little bit just underneath his uh, moustache there with his beard. Just dabbed it on there so I can get his uh, underneath his uh, lip and stuff there so a little detail to help make it a little more um, easy to distinguish that there's a mouth under there and as well as that I'm also going to be going around and picking out all of the eyes now I'm aiming for the uh, eyelids on his cloak here but I'm not too worried and I'm pretty much just painting over the whole thing so I can get a good even coat without having to worry about it too much because we're going to come in a little bit later and uh, make them look a lot more like eyes and give them that attention they need but for now I want to focus on like the eyelids around there by giving them a, the skin flesh appearance to make it look a little bit more intimidating. Then once we have all those picked out you can see there's quite a lot on there but now what we want to do is come in with a wash and we're going to be using Nuln oil for this and I'm going to be giving a wash over uh, everything here on the cloak. So um I'm also going to be giving a wash over all of the little eyes you can see here as well to try and uh, blend it in a bit more naturally with the cloak and make it look like these eyes are popping out and emerging from this sort of alive cloak itself. So just going in and giving them the whole cloak a complete wash and uh, being a little bit careful to avoid some of the pulling. There's a lot of uh, curves and folds in this cloak, especially with those eyelids in there. So pay attention to it while it's drying to, to avoid it pulling too much. Then once our wash is completely dry, what we're going to be doing is coming in with some mahogany brown. And we're going to be using this for his underclothes that he's got here. So basically just the little areas you can see that are underneath his cloak. So he's going basically just for a plain brown robe underneath. And that is of course on the front here as you can see, as well as his uh, arms as well. As you can see the um, underneath uh, coming through a little bit. So we want to pick those out too. And of course being careful to avoid... Uh, the areas of the cloak we've just given a wash to so it'll make it a lot easier and we won't have to spend so much time tidying things up so a lot of brush control especially with these folds and uh, wrinkles over the areas that we're trying to paint now with that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some Reichland flesh shade and of course this is for the flesh and I'm only going to be focusing it on uh, Halister's skin himself because so, I want them to separate out from the eyes we have over the cloak. But totally up to you here. You could uh, add in the flesh wash over these eyes as well. But like I said, I wanted to make it look like they were more merged in with the cloak rather than uh, stuck out as something completely different as if we would have given it with the Reckon Flesh Shade. So up to you what you want to do here. I'm just going to stick with Halister's skin and south with the wash. Then once we have that wash dry, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some Agrax Earthshade. And we're going to be using this for the brown areas that we've painted up as well. So that's just his uh, underclothes or his under robe that he's wearing here. And um, being careful, of course, to avoid getting it where we don't want it to um, with the washes we've already applied. But And also just being careful too, the little folds on his underneath clothing that you can see at the bottom of his... Uh, cloak there can very easily pull so just pay attention to that area as it's drying as well and then now what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with some hemp rope and we're going to be using this for uh, Halister's belt since to me it looks like he's just sort of used a shabby bit of <laughs> rope that an adventurer has had to tie his um, cloak up that's what I'm going with here since he is the mad mage after all so I'm guessing he does he <laughs> Yeah, it makes himself look very shabby and disheveled so I think uh, hemp rope 
is the great thing for having him tying up his uh, cloak that he's wearing here. So uh, just a nice bit of contrast in color as well. Then once we have that rope painted up, we're going to come in now with some ivory. And this is going to be used for uh, the, quite a few parts on the miniatures. We're going to be going around and picking out all of the insides of the eyes here. So spend a little bit of time. There's a lot of eyes on this miniature. So spend a little bit of time going through, picking them all out. As well as that, I'm also going to be using this for uh, Halister's hair. His facial hair as well as I'm also going to be picking out his eyes as well. So a lot of uh, fine detail work here with the ivory. So don't be afraid to spend some time. Switch to, a smaller switch to different brushes if you need to, especially to get into those little eyes. There's a lot of very small ones. So, and um, really try and practice a lot of brush control with these bits. Then once we have all those areas picked out, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some natural flesh once again. And I'm going to be using it for picking out the highlights on Halister here, as you can see. So that's aiming for areas like uh, the tip of the nose, eyebrows. As well as that, I'm also going to be going around and picking out a lot of the little uh, eyelids on the eyes of his cloak as well. Since we have them blended in with the shadows and stuff now, we can come along, run it across the um, edge of them so it's got a little bit of edge highlighting on all those eyes now it's up to you if you want to do all the eyes on here there is a lot to pick out so maybe pick out some of the bigger ones if you're a little bit worried about spending so much time on picking them out then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some dragon red and we're going to be using this for his uh like dragon wand he has in his hand and um since i'm going for sort of his classic uh, depiction that he has uh, for his like box art sort of thing um we're just going with the red dragon here but totally up to you if you want to go with a different color but i think it also adds a lot of uh, contrast and a very like stand out focal point on the miniature too something to break up all the very drab colors we have at the moment then once we've done that i'm going to add in just a little bit more detail to our uh, wand that he's holding here. I want to put in sort of like a dragon's belly scales on here So I'm just coming in with a khaki to do this and I'm just picking it out on one side of The miniature maybe a little bit hard to see here, but it's actually two like dragon heads sculpted pointing uh, Towards each other. So it's a good place where you can place the uh, sort of like belly scales here So just adding in a little bit more detail, but you could totally leave it red if you wanted to then once we have that little bit of extra detail picked out on that wand, what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with Known Oil once again, and we're going to give uh, pretty much everything we'll just paint it a wash, so uh, except for not the inside of the eyes, of course, we're just aiming for Halister's hair as well as the wand as well that he has in his hand. We want to be uh, giving the black wash too. So especially with the hair, be very, very careful. We don't want to put any of that wash onto our skin tone because it's going to be a bit of a pain to... Uh, touch up so being careful here um, but don't worry too much of it is you can just go back in and tidy up as you need to then now with those areas given a wash what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some mahogany brown once again and this is to do the highlights of course of his uh, under cloak or his under robes whatever he's sort of wearing underneath here the places that we've already gone with the mahogany brown and just picking out those highest points so nice and easy there the areas that catch the sun especially with the sculpt it's really nice and easy to pick out the highlights then very uh, well sculpted in there so nice and easy to run your brush along there then once we have that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be giving some highlights to the wand so this is coming back in with our dragon red again and this is just picking out some of the high points and uh, some of the areas that would naturally catch a light also while well, it's trying to highlight the little dragon heads on there a little bit more so you can uh, distinguish them a bit more especially since they're going to look a lot more impressive with the the washes on there and the highlights just give it that little bit of extra flair then with that now complete what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in with our ivory once again and we're going to be using this to highlight uh, halister's hair this crazy white wild hair and it's just a matter of going through and skimming it with your brush because there's some nice uh, sculpted details on here as well and picking out those areas that you need to as you can see i've switched to a finer point brush so i can a little bit easier get those strands of uh hair but <laughs> i'm still learning especially when it comes to hair to uh, practice doing fine strands to make it look realistic then with those hair strands all highlighted up what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in with some basalt gray and we're going to be using this as a highlight for the uh, cloak that he's wearing so like i said before 
uh, we gave it a wash to give it that shadows and darken it down now we're going to come in with an even lighter gray and really pick out those highlights and it's going to really uh, give a nice effect and you'll be able to really see the difference between the highlights and the shadows especially on this model with so many folds and crinkles and uh, all bits of highs and lows there's a lot to pick out here so spend the time going through pick out the areas that you uh, think would look good and the ones that are naturally in there so it's going to be a little bit of a longer process since there is so many but it's going to look really great once we finish it up then once we've done that we're going to add in one more sort of special effect detail and this is going to involve a lot of contrast paints. I've got iand and yellow here warp lightning blood angels red and athromatic blue and these uh, contrast paints of course are very uh, thin paints slash like uh, washes and inks that are going to be used for as you can see the eyes of the cloak uh, now Hellas' black cloak uh, with the depictions that I've seen so far doesn't actually have uh, different colored eyes in his cloak they're very um, similar but the way I see it is I wanted to add in a little bit more pop of color and vibrancy and I sort of depict uh, in my head sort of imagine it as like it's got like beholder like powers and all these special eye effects with the cloak that it can uh, produce and I wanted to show that off with a bunch of different colors and really help uh, boost the visual interest of it on the table especially from a distance with popping in these colors and contrast paints is a great way to uh, do this by keeping them thin as well it gives the effect that you can still see the uh, white underneath with the eye and it really sort of pulls around it and just tints it slightly not making it a full color but having it like as a wash so you get a little bit of highlights and low lights in there as well and with that Alistair black cloak will be done and we can now move on to some of those nice glamour shots where we can see what we've accomplished and see all those effects in action And with all that complete, we have finally finished painting up Hellas the Black Cloak, the Mad Mage from the Dungeons and Dragons miniature range by Gale Force 9. So I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. Whether you want to follow along with what I did here, or you just want to use this video as some inspiration in painting up your own miniatures. But with all that said, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.